Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2020 release that's available on VOD. That is video on demand for people who don't know. Sorry, got to cover my bases. This is Hawk and Rev Vampire Slayers. Now, I do take emails from people from time to time who are doing very independent film. This is one of those very independent films. And so when I'm able to, which I try and find the time to, uh, I like to do reviews for these very underseen, underrated films. Now I am 100% honest and I let the people who are contacting me know that I'm 100% honest in my reviews. So thankfully, as, as I've been doing this, I haven't had any real stinkers and this still holds to that. Not a stinker at all. I actually quite enjoyed this film. Now I would recommend that people rent it VOD or buy it VOD, however you want to do this. Uh, but I have to give a shout out to Clint Morris, who is the one who contacted me for reviewing this film. And I do need to issue an apology. He contacted me like two months before I'm doing this, basically. Actually, maybe even a bit after that. And um, I meant to get to it. I got busy and then I forgot about it. And then finally, I remembered, oh no, I needed to review that film. I said I would. And I'm glad I remembered because this was a lot of fun. And like I said, I am, re I am recommending this film. So let's go over this a little bit. Hawk and Rev Vampire Slayers, written and directed by Ryan Barton Grimley. And he actually stars in it as well as Hawk. Um, he's done films such as The Truth, Killer Friend, Lexus Man, Elijah's Ashes, and Listen Carefully. Now you can tell that he's done a decent amount of film before because it looks polished. It looks very low budget and it feels very low budget, but it also feels and looks very polished for being low budget. So you can tell this guy's been doing this stuff. You can tell he knows what he's doing with this stuff. And he's a good actor too. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the acting in a minute. So as far as, well, I, I won't have spoilers. So I'm going to give you a very quick synopsis of this. But there's really not much to say synopsis wise because the story is very basic. Uh, it's nothing really all that new. It's very basic. It's a horror comedy. It is about some loser guys who end up fighting evil, yeah, as in the form of vampires. So, yeah, that's basically it. Yes, there are some like minor twists kind of here and there and some kind of surprises, but pretty basic, nothing brand new or anything. But I would just say if you like horror comedy and you like ones that have a very good amount of comedy to them, this film is definitely for you because... There's a lot of comedy in this film. I was very surprised at how consistent the comedy is in this. And this is something I say a lot in my reviews, especially when I'm talking about any horror comedies or co uh, horror films with comedy in them. It's hard to get the right mix of that stuff uh, because part of the problem is if you're trying too hard and your jokes aren't really landing, then it can be very painful to watch. Uh, so you need to make sure that you're really putting in stuff that actually works. And I think for the most part, there was a lot of stuff that really worked in this film. And even the stuff that like I didn't particularly find funny, it didn't annoy me. I didn't feel like they were really misses. And there were maybe three or four times where I actually laughed out loud, which is very hard to get me to do, honestly, because especially when I'm watching by myself. So... To me, that speaks volumes. Uh, they did a really good job with the comedy. And like I said, it is throughout the film. Like, And it keeps it helps with the pacing too. And it also helps with the fact that there's not a lot of actual story to it. It's just very basic and nothing new. So, bravo. You know, you guys saw where your strength is and you focused on that comedy as a strength. And that's what makes the film worth watching. That's what makes it, makes it worth re-watching too. And it's a good flick. So, the title font and the theme song in the beginning is beautifully 80s, uh, so <clears throat> not only is it beautifully, beautifully 80s, so it'll give people who love 80s nostalgia, give them that nostalgic feel and get them pumped up, but it also gives you the idea that it's not going to be serious. Uh, also, there's comedy like immediately, so you get the idea, you get the tone for the film going forward, you're just like, oh, okay, they're not very serious about this, they're just trying to make a funny film. And they did. The intro portion lets you know this is going to be packed with comedy, but also packed with some gore. And this is one of the things that I personally really like, especially in lower budget films and in comedies. When you're doing actual gore, like when blood's spraying, 
do it too much. You know, just go overboard. I always find that to be really funny. Uh, it's something I love. I actually have worked on some independent films way in the past, and that was one of the things I would always push for is when there's blood, just go over the top. Just make it ridiculously over the top because to me, that's very funny. And there's a good amount of that in this film. And there's also, uh, they kind of roll additional comedy into some of it as well, especially towards the end. There's a part where there's a copious amount of blood kind of flying all over the place and they play off of it quite well, in my opinion. Uh, really good directing, uh, especially for a low-budget film. There are some very inspired shots and inspired camera movement. I was very um, impressed with, with the directing and the cinematography because a lot of the times with these lower-budget films, the directing and the cinematography is very basic. But this is not. You can tell that this person really knows what they're doing. You can tell that they've done it before, obviously, and that they have great creative ideas to engage the audience with the camera. Um, so, yeah, a lot of really interesting movements, a lot of really interesting shots. The other thing is there are a lot of kind of like quick cuts in the film that really, I feel like, help keep it moving. And they also kind of like maintain the energy of the film, if that makes any sense. Uh, it has a bit of a frantic pace to it and a frantic style, but it actually really, really works with what it's going for. Um, comedy aspect in particular. Uh, Ryan Barton Grimley and Ari Schneider do a nice job acting, and they actually have really good chemistry together. Now, uh, Barton Grimley, like I said, he's the writer-director of the film. He plays Hawk. He did a really good job, and Ari Schneider plays Rev, he also did a really nice job. And like I said, their their chemistry together is really great. You can see them as real characters. You can see them as actually friends. All their interactions feel real for what's going on in the story. So they create good characters. They stay in those within the confines of those characters. And there's awesome banter. There's very funny dialogue. I'm a fan. The music in this is actually integrated really well, too, and, and that's another aspect of it that keeps it moving, keeps it feeling like it's never really stagnating, and that it's staying very upbeat as well. Thank you for properly lighting scenes for events taking place in the dark. This is it's one of my pet peeves when things are taking place in the dark, and you can't see what's going on. Uh, they did a really good job in this where they usually set the the night events in areas where it would naturally naturally be lit with like street lights and stuff like that so that was a smart way to kind of actually get good lighting in there even though it's dark so kudos on that i really appreciate that uh type of filmmaking because nothing makes me more pissed off than when there are things happening in the dark and i can't see and there are plenty of films that do that so thank you the story aspect is light, like I said, but there are a few twists. There are a few twists. There's one supposed to be kind of big twist in the end. You may or may not see it coming, but um, yeah, I mean, good enough. And like I said, it's a comedy. Like, there's so much good comedy in it that it just honestly doesn't matter. I didn't really care about the story. It's, it, that wasn't the point. You certainly never get bored with the film. That's a big thing and they kind of set up a potential for there to be a sequel and I am in for that if there is a sequel I'm down Clint if there's going to be a sequel to this go ahead and send me that screener I will do a review of that because I'm in I think it's fun and it should also be fun um, the other thing I want to say to wrap this up so I wanted to kind of compare this to the last time I watched a horror comedy and even though I think that Psycho Goreman Overall, I, I would rate it a little bit more than Hawk and Rev Vampire Slayers. I do think that I'd be more apt to re-watch Hawk and Rev Vampire Slayers over Psycho Gorman, just because the comedy is better, in my opinion. I do feel like Psycho Gorman, the comedy got a little bit exhaustive, uh, and there's not as much rewatch value there, in my opinion, although the practical effects are unbelievable, and there's a lot of other cool stuff about that film. The comedy is what sells this film. They do such a good job with the writing. You can tell the script had been revised numerous times that they tried as hard as they could, 
while Ryan Barton Grimley tried as hard as he could to make sure that the jokes were good, that they were done consistently, like it is jam-packed with comedic stuff, and that's impressive to me. I think the script is very tight, and I like that. So, overall, I really enjoyed this film. I would 100% implore people to get it VOD. It is 100% worth it. And also, you know, supporting small filmmakers. That is a big thing, because how else do you get big filmmakers? You need small filmmakers. And also, these are people putting a lot of work out there. And they're probably not getting a lot returns-wise. It's mainly for creativity and, you know, just getting it out there. So, let's support it. Um... Out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a very solid three and a half star rating. Quite good. Uh, definitely enjoyed it. I'd love to hear other people's comments. How did you feel about this film? Go ahead and put it down there in the comments. And we could talk spoilers in the comments. That's fine. I'm good with that. But do me a quick favor. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed to me. A lot of people who watch my videos are not subscribed to me. And you would really be helping me out if you would subscribe. I would greatly appreciate that. Also, if you could hit the notification bell button, that way you'll know whenever I'm putting up new videos like one of these videos or unboxings, more in-depth analysis, movie reviews, all that jazz. But regardless, thank you for checking this video out, and until next time, keep it brutal.